So did you submit your screenplays for All I Want and Someone I Used to Know to competitions, screenplay competitions? No. You didn't? No, no. I, I, I have submitted, you know, previous scripts of mine to competitions, either plays or, or, or screenplays. Um, and I haven't won anything. You know, I've got, I've been placed uh, various things, but I haven't won anything. And you know, and this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier about taste. You know, I, I do think that the market doesn't always know, you know? Um, and, and I think for this film, for all I want, the intention was always to go out there and, and, and shoot it. A great example is this, um, when we started to, you know, structure the story and when we started to really think about how to, you know, bring that idea from, you know, our heads to the page, um, to set and to screen, I told Melissa that, you know, this script is going to be probably at max 75 pages and she was a little bit kind of surprised because I think the the industry standard at least is probably at least 90 95 98 or whatever you know um, but having done my previous you know indie short I mean indie having done my previous indie uh, feature um, where that script was you know clocked in at I think 98 or 102 pages long um, and it was an indie film. We never got any of the, we, we didn't shoot 100% of the script. And so we really had to go into post-production in that film, really struggling to re-piece the story together in a way that was coherent, you know? And so I knew that this film would be really kind of short shooting schedule because of budget, because of schedule. And so the intention was, how do we go into post-production in the editing room with as much of the script as possible, right? So that we can really go in there um, with all the tools, you know, for the editor. It, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a waste of time and a waste of kind of, you know, vision to have a 98 page script and you go into a, you know, 10 day shoot schedule where you can only shoot seven pages a day, the math, the math is going to basically squeeze out 15, 20 pages out of your script, you know? And so that's a good example is that we didn't really write the script with the intention of going out there and submitting it to, to, to contests or, or going out there to try to raise money. We, we really, this was really the blueprint for this kind of journey that we were going to go on. It, it was the roadmap for this trip that we were going to take. And, and so, it, you know, uh, we really kind of nailed it down to a quote unquote, you know, short feature length script um, by industry standard, you know, but the end process is that we have a full length feature film that's, you know, over an hour and a half. So. so you thought if I take out 20 pages, that'll save us X amount of dollars because we won't be here. I don't know how many you figure what, uh, right. you know two more days or three more days, whatever, how many days. Right, right. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, what it comes down to for filmmaking, for indie filmmaking is, is, is at some point it comes down to math. You know, if you are shooting 10 days and you are probably going to be budgeted at seven, eight pages a day, right, then that means that you're probably going to have a 70, 80 page script. And if you want to have you know, enough time for the actors to kind of play around a little bit. If you want to give enough time for your crew to, to give you a good kind of a, you know, uh, a set in terms of lighting, if you want to have, have a little room for making those mistakes on set, then, you know, if you go into a, a, a production telling your first AD that I need to shoot 10 pages a day, that's, that's just really kind of unfair for the production. And, you know, what ends up happening is that you go into post-production with 20% of your script missing, you know, um, and, you know, it, it's really tough. So if you hadn't done someone I used to know, and I'm sorry, I don't know how much time went by between yeah. both projects, but you probably would have then gone in with the mindset of let's do industry standard. Absolutely. Let's do absolutely. 98 pages. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you go in there not you go in there with this. It's purely artistic. You go in there sure. wanting to express something, 
and and you know everybody's saying kind of let's do it director producer you do it and then the first day of shooting the crew and the cast is getting to know each other and then you miss you know you miss i would say one scene even if it's one scene and then you go into the next day already behind and then you go in the next day we're behind and it's the next thing you know at the end of the production schedule you've missed you know a, a nice chunk of of your movie so you know i i think that without that experience without having gone through that um i probably would have been like yeah let's go out there with a full length script and let's just do our best you know and i think we probably would have had some struggles you know in terms of narrative in 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 post production sure and then there's that whole romantic notion of like hey i'm in la and i'm on a set right and this is cool and i'm i'm doing this yeah. but then time and money slip away so were you always so disciplined was that that was just something that was gained from this last production or were there other things that kind of helped you become that on point because i'm sure that's not fun right. to have to be that guy on set right. but you you essentially have to you know i mean i think I think it's it's just having an idea of what you can accomplish and what you can't accomplish, you know. Um, you you. I mean, I, I was I was saying to you know some of our people in the crew during pre-production was that at some point the artistic kind of you know uh, a journey becomes a, a a kind of a business journey. You know, and you have to, I mean, I literally was using words like we really have to manage assets and liabilities, you know, That's great. Um, yeah. and, and a good example is you go into production with a 100 page script and that's your asset, you know, and then you look at the budget and you, you look at your schedule and then suddenly that, that script becomes a liability because you can't shoot the extra 15 pages and then the crew is like, Oh my God, we're behind. We're behind, behind, and that puts a certain type of energy on this on the set. So, um, to answer your question, you know, um, I think I think the 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 um, consensus between Melissa and I was always, let's prepare this product uh, for success. You know, let let's let's try to like create a roadmap, and we wrote the movie for a location that we knew that we had access to. You know, and the location changed several times during pre-production, and I had to go back in there and 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 basically tinker a little bit. Um, and uh, and so that's another thing is 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 I think you have to go in there with with as much um, as much of information as you can. What I'm seeing still again seeking balance. Seeking balance. You know, one scale is tipping more, and then you're 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 rewriting to fit the scene, and it sounds yeah. like you did an excellent job of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we had an amazing we had an amazing um, you know cinematographer Ruben O'Malley. I mean, he came from New York. I mean, I literally met him. You know, we had phone conversations and emails uh, leading into the production, but I literally met him two days you know before filming. You know, I picked him up uh, at LAX with Melissa. On Thursday, we started shooting on Saturday. Oh, we wow. did a tech scout on Friday, and we had dinner and talked about kind of what we wanted to do. And so we had an amazing editor, you know, along the way, Derek Druin, um, amazing sound designer, composer. Along the way, we had so many people who were, you know, getting paid, you know, uh, far less than they deserve. And and so I, I was certainly was seeking the balance of trying to make sure that all the pieces were. In the right places, you know, but at the same time, it, it, you know, it comes down to the kind of the group of people that you have to collaborate with.